So this laser looks like one, but it is actually two. And that's because inside there's actually two different types of lasers. This is the Laser Pecker 4. I've actually done reviews of a couple other Laser Pecker machines in the past. Now these always start out as a Kickstarter. And at the time of this video, it's actually gone live and you can purchase it. So I wanted to wait on my review to do that. And a quick caveat before we get going, Laser Picker reached out and asked if I would do a review. I am not getting paid for this whatsoever, but if you do decide to pick this up, the link down below is an affiliate link that will give me a kickback that helps support this channel. So this laser looks like one, but it is actually two. And that's because inside there's actually two different types of lasers. Traditionally, when you see a diode laser, it is on a gantry. These are going to be the blue light lasers and their wavelength is 450 nanometers. And these are the ones that have gone all the way from two watts all the way up most recently to 40 watts with Xtool and Atomstack. I've done tons of reviews of those in the past. They're great options if you want a bigger gantry machine. But this is an entirely different beast because it has not only that 450 nanometer diode laser inside, but they also have a 1065 nanometer two watt laser diode. This is at a different frequency. And the big benefit of that is you can actually do metal with it. So this means raw metal like stainless steel, aluminum, brass, gold, all that kind of stuff. That's just not something you can do with like a blue light traditional laser or even a CO2 laser. When you look at bigger fiber lasers to do metal, and this is more or less what the form factor is it's just scaled down, but they're giving you the added benefit of having the more traditional diode laser in there that allows you to do acrylics and especially wood, which you cannot do with a more traditional fiber machine. Now the blue light diode is 10 watts, which is more than enough to do engraving on tons of different materials, but it also does a good job cutting as long as most of your stuff is fairly thin. Most of the tests I was doing, it was just with basswood uh, and really with the form factor, I don't wind up doing a ton of cutting. I still mostly see these as an engraving machine. And that mainly is because of the reduced work area. So those bigger diodes are talking like 400 by 400 millimeters. This is 120 by 160 millimeters. So really not much bigger than this card, like right here. So not a ton of room. Now laser pecker does offer a slide extension. You can see it in the shot right here. And this moves the work bed forward and back. And that extension gets you 300 millimeters by 160. We'll talk more about the extension in a second, but coming back to some more of the core stuff on here, there's a couple things that come with this directly. And that is this bed that allows for airflow underneath. And then underneath that you have these threaded screws and they give you a couple of different metal plates that you can use as fixtures. So you're always engraving in the exact same spot. Those are really nice. Again, that's a really common feature on the bigger fiber machines. And then on the safety side of things, you do want eye protection with these because it does have that blue light diode laser. So they have this cover right here, which is probably like the nicest version of this that I have seen. Uh, and that's because it just attaches with magnets. And then there's a fan on the back that is powered from the actual laser itself. So to put it on, that's all it is and then you can just plug it in. All of this is sitting on a powered stand. So you have the up and down controls right back here. You're gonna use that to focus your machine. This does not have autofocus. I've seen that on a few other machines, but they use the same process as those bigger industrial machines use as well. And that is with two red laser dots. So when you focus it, you'll see those laser dots on your material and you'll just raise this up and raise this down until those dots become one and then you know you are focused. One thing I did find a little hard with that is this guard does come pretty far down uh, and it, they do give you like a little groove in the front to get the material in there. But if I wanted to like finally adjust the material because maybe the positioning was off, uh, it's kind of hard to get into. You can move the entire plate if you wanted, but you just don't have like super easy access to the material. And when you try to take this off, once it's focused, you actually don't have enough clearance to be able to get it out. So that's more like nitpicky. Uh, you definitely can position it. And it is nice that they're basically bringing this all the way down because it's blocking out a ton of light. Kind of going around this machine, a couple of cool features they have is uh, the ability to clean the fans. And so this is something Actually, I haven't seen on anything. Uh, so right here, this vent cover pops off and you have access to the internal fans if you need to blow it out or clean it. And just like with the cover itself, this is magnetic. So this just pops right back in. And then coming all the way to the back, 
you can see we have the laser itself. And this is actually removable from the stain. This guy is what you power and all the accessories run off of this, including connecting it to a computer. Uh, they advertise, like this is if you wanted to like engrave something, like if I wanted to engrave you, I would just put it right there. Or if you just wanted to put this up against something, you can engrave it. You'd have to hold this like super steady to get this to work. One thing with the stand as well, there is a knob right here on the side, and that is so you can angle this. And again, this is notched as well. So they're really specific positions that you can put this in, but they have this because you can use a rotary with this as well. I haven't really played around with the rotary a ton, but from what I can tell, it is pretty much your standard rotary. It's a chuck rotary, meaning this claws will actually hold on to whatever you're working with. It's still gonna be relatively small stuff that you are working in. And it'll be a little finicky to get it set up, but if you are wanting to do like rings or small cylinders or even small cups, it's something that you can do. So coming back to this guy, you can see this is the lens right here. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but as I'm moving this around, you can see there's like a mirror right in the middle. And I believe that's a part of the actual galvo mechanism. So this is a galvanometer, meaning that this doesn't move around on a big gantry like those other diode lasers or even the CO2 lasers. But that light beam is generated here, then it's reflected by that mirror all around your workpiece. And the big benefit of that is that these are super fast. And before I put this back on right here at the bottom, that is where those two red laser dots come out of. And then you're using the stand to focus. So on the speed side of things, this is 2000 millimeters per second. That's compared to a diode machine, which really you see topped out at 15,000 millimeters per minute. So doing some quick math that converts to 120,000 millimeters per minute. Again, that is because this is a galvanometer versus a gantry. So you can move that galvanometer back and forth really quick, like, like a fish tail versus the gantry going all around your work area. Now I did a few quick tests, definitely some logos on cards, as well as a quick picture of my daughter in a bear outfit that my wife sent me. Uh, that is fun. Now I'd love doing cards like these. These are aluminum, but there's a coating on top. So you're basically removing that coating. You can do something like this on pretty much any laser, but what you can't do is when you're doing actual raw aluminum. You can see I am engraving a part for R2-D2. It's actually his foot. And there's a label right there. And this is directly on bare aluminum. Now, one of the cooler things you can do and probably the hardest thing to show on camera is stainless steel, just because this is insanely reflective. Uh, you can see there's kind of an elephant right there. I'm not sure if it's actually going to show up without getting all the reflections. Uh, you can kind of see it going in right there, but you can engrave directly on stainless steel as well. And that would also apply to like non-coated steel or other different metals. So if metal engraving is something that you are wanting to do, this is a great option. So let's talk about control real quick. First right here on the top, this is actually a touch screen that has a few different controls on it. You can switch between the two different laser modes. You can also pull up past things that you've run from the machine. So this has local memory. That's also where you'll be able to do the focus process as well as preview process where it basically gives you an outline of what you are about to engrave. This is real similar to the trace function that you might have seen with the bigger gantry machines, except it does it so fast. It honestly looks like a solid outline. You can control this in a few different ways. First is with an app. And so that's actually how I've been doing all of these tests. They're just directly through my phone over Bluetooth, but you can also connect it to their own software. There is a USB-C port on the back, but it also supports Lightburn. I haven't gotten deep into the Galvo slash fiber side inside of Lightburn. I plan to do a full video on that in the future, but just know if that's something you're already using with other machines or something you're familiar with, you can do it as well. All right, so let's talk about the price. Currently, this is about 1600 bucks. So definitely on the high end compared to the size and work area of what you can get. But again, this is an entirely different class of machine. If you were going to step this up to more of like the traditional industrial style version of this machine. You might look at the 20 watt fiber laser from Ohmtech and that comes in at $2,700. So a thousand dollars more and the prices go up and up and up from there. But where it's starting to get really interesting is other companies are more or less creating something in the same form factor. So you also have the X-Tool F1, the Atom Stack M4, and even a machine from Mr. Carve. Several of those machines I have in my shop and I am planning on doing a review of. We're able to do more of a comparison between these machines. So with all that being said, who do I think this thing is 
four. If you're wanting to engrave large things or cut out lots of parts from a large piece of material, this is not what you want. This is a machine if you're wanting to do engraving, specifically if you like the fact that you can do both wood and metal. If you just need to do metal, you can actually get the Laser Pecker 3, which the best that I can tell is the same machine. They just have taken out the blue light diode. But this guy, I think it's just like 100 if not $200 more uh, that adds in that functionality if you're also wanting to engrave wood. Now, if you already have a laser diode, a gantry style, like an X-Tool D1, does this make sense to upgrade? I would say no, because this isn't an upgrade. This is going to be doing an entirely different task. Again, coming back to the fact that this is going to do metal, or if you're doing small engravings and you're having to batch a ton out. So you really need to blow through those quick, and this is going to be a great option. So you get speed, metal, wood, but at the cost of a smaller work area and an increased price. Now, I would love to know what you guys think of these style machines. Just like we saw a huge influx of the gantry diodes, that's what it feels like is starting to happen with these, which is nice because this technology used to be reserved for machines like well over five to ten thousand dollars. Now, if you're just getting into lasers and you're not really sure where to start, this is a great overview of the different types of lasers and what could work best for you. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.